All right, it is my pleasure to welcome into the Rowdy Studio Mike Joy from NASCAR on Fox and Speed. Now, is it appropriate to call you a play-by-play -play announcer? Is that the right term for a NASCAR? Yep. Yeah, lap-by-lap -lap just doesn't have the right connotation. I did so. read somewhere and it said lap-by-lap, -lap, right. and, and that did sound weird. Just a little. Uh, so call it play-by-play -play like okay. the other sports. That's Pl fine. It's interesting, though, because the other sports, the stick and ball sports, they have natural breaks in the action, which NASCAR doesn't really have because even a caution, you know, has a lot of important ramifications on the race. Does that make NASCAR easier to call because there's so much going on or more difficult because you don't have that moment of pause? Well, it's far more difficult. Uh, it's much like calling a soccer match where there are no scheduled timeouts, uh, even on a goal. The ball gets back in play very quickly in soccer. However, there's only one ball. And we have 43 of them out there flying around. And, right. and you know, it's more like, a, it, it'd be like trying to call a pinball game with multi-ball. You yeah. never know what's gonna end up where or why. Uh, so you have to weave your stories around the possibilities of what can happen and then hone in on how the race develops. And, and it, you know, it's difficult because there's so many things you need to focus on. You need to focus on the point standings. You need to focus on the race leaders. You need to focus on the big names who may be back in the pack and the racing that's back in the pack. Must be a hard balance to achieve at times. It's very hard to balance and we get lots of mail and email. Uh, why didn't you show my favorite driver? Why is the camera always on Dale Jr.? So, well, you know. He's Dale and, Jr. <laughs> and, uh, or Jimmy Johnson. Well, if he's leading, you know, and we tell even drivers or sponsors that, that come up to Daryl or Larry or Jeff or me and say, you know, how can we get more exposure? Run up front. <laughs> and, you, you know, help you help us a little and we'll help you a lot. But you've got to get that car into contention to, to really get it on camera. Yeah, and you know the media business is, is changing and the way we consume media is changing right. so quickly with live streaming, with mobile devices, with, with Twitter and Facebook. How, where do you, do you, I, I assume you guys are talking about this all the time and where do you see things moving in terms of consuming media on demand or broadcast on demand or, or how it's going to work out? Well, the first big thing that happened and where we kind of got caught blindsided was a year and a half ago at Daytona. The driver PR reps were tweeting mm -hmm. that the track was coming up in turn two and tweeting the driver comments. We weren't so much aware of this until NASCAR throws the caution flag. Well, why is the caution out? Debris in turn two. Well, the debris turned out to be this huge pothole. Right. And social media knew it before we knew it to inform millions of viewers. So from that point on, uh, we have an associate in the booth who's monitoring social media, um, mostly Twitter because the drivers and the teams have chosen Twitter as their way to get their information out during the race quickly to a wide variety of media. The second layer of that is a lot of the media is doing their own reporting on Twitter and then leading people to the stories that they will file later. Uh, the one thing you're not going to see us doing is tweeting during the telecast. And the reason is simple. I can tweet to several thousand followers. Or I can face the camera and I can talk to several million viewers. Uh, which is more important? And by the way, which side does the paycheck come from? Right. So we're going to do the telecast absence of Twitter or Facebook or MySpace. Do, do you foresee uh, responding directly to inquiries via Twitter no. from audience members? Uh, we do this a lot on the Barrett-Jackson auctions on speed, where we use the speed website for people to email us. Uh, if we have a question about a car, or if we happen to make a statement and somebody knows it's incorrect, they'll let us know right away and we'll gladly make the correction because yeah. you know, we're there to learn along with everybody else. A few years back, well it was more than a decade, I'll call it a few years, uh, we did a couple of pay-per-view events at Pocono and during that era we took email questions on the air from viewers, sifted through them and uh, kind of brought, brought the important ones to the surface and sometimes what the viewer is looking for will help move the commentary in a certain direction that maybe we didn't figure on it going um, when, until we actually posed the question on air. So I think having an interactive component to the telecast is good as long as it doesn't run away with the show right. and become the show. Now, uh, we could get to a point in a race, 400 mile race, and somebody goes, what happened to Jimmy Johnson? And we'll go, oh yeah, we haven't seen him we in a while. We were too busy yeah, tweeting. Let's, uh, let's, <laughs> no, uh, let, let's go back and catch up and find out what what happened with Jimmy or Kyle Busch or somebody else that maybe their position in the race has kind of fallen off our radar. So yes, it's a help. And we know that all the drivers have fans 
who want to catch up with, uh, with their favorite driver. But the biggest way that the job has changed and the telecast has changed is when Fox introduced the constant scoring ticker mm -hmm. back in 2001. And that means we don't have to update the three and four lap down cars as often as we would have prior to having that constant scroll uh, of, of, the, of the running positions and the distance behind. That's freed us up to do other things. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.